welcome to the Remedy Fibers podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet hosted by me, Jillian. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Today, I have a special episode where I'm going to teach you how I drop spindle and how to make your own drop spindle. I know that spinning can be very daunting. It can be a very expensive hobby. An investment in a spinning wheel can be a lot so today i'm going to show you how to go to amazon.com or any craft website to find your very own tools to one make your own job spindle but also how i like to use my job spindle so if you're interested stay tuned but if you're new here i live in northern california with my husband and dog benny i love everything yarn related and i hope you stay for my yarn journey so believe it or not i actually made this job spindle in my spinning class that i took earlier this year and with three easy tools under ten dollars you can make your very own job spindle at home practice have that initial investment try it out and hopefully you can excel in your skills with spinning the only disclaimer that I'm going to mention is that spinning is a skill just like knitting and crochet it takes a lot of hours of practice so don't feel bad if you haven't got the spindle down the very first time you tried or if it takes lots of practice because it took me quite a bit of years obviously on and off to finally get how to drop spindle and today i'm going to show you some things that i spun with the drop spindle some things that i spun with the spinning wheel so that you could kind of get an idea of what you can make with your craft so originally when i first started spinning i used a spindle i can try to see if i could find a picture of it it was kind of like a 3d printed spinner spindle and i wasn't getting it it was very small and I've even tried spindles like this before and I wasn't getting it. So let's talk about which spindles to get. Obviously, it can add up a lot in prices. You can get a $70 spindle, believe it or not. But for this, all you need is a small wooden dowel. And everything I'll talk about, I'll include direct links on where you can buy it. As well as searching for a toy truck wheel, believe it or not. And then finding a way to create a little saw so that it can hold your wool as you spin. If not, that's not a big deal because not all spindles have that little cut in the wood and then one of these little metal pieces I did use one of those jewelry pliers to kind of tighten it a little bit but really since it's a wooden dowel all I did was twist it in so really there's minimal tools to make a spindle under ten dollars and believe it or not I can show you this is the wooden dowel I twisted this hook inside and then because the toy wheel has that hole I was able to just insert it inside and because it's a tight fit I don't have any issues when I'm actually spinning there's nothing coming apart nothing is getting undone so this is the skein that I spun solely with my drop spindle and so you can see this is kind of how it looks when it's in the skein form and I'm gonna just take it out so that you can see it but this was solely done on my drop spindle it's a merino blend that I I got from my spinning class and of course there's thin and thick you're gonna have to practice so that it can be more consistent but I'm really happy with how this came out and I think just to honor and commemorate my first job spindle progress this will probably stay in a skein form but I'm really happy with it I think it's very beautiful one thing that I can advise during my spinning process is not to be so hard on yourself I know you see yarns that other people make it look easy or their spin cycle but that takes lots of lots of practice some benefits of using a drop spindle is the price point it's very inexpensive to get into spinning especially if you've been wanting to try a new hobby but also it can help you practice the mechanisms of spinning and then drafting spinning and drafting when you're using a spinning wheel there's a lot of pieces going you have to draft you have to move your feet you have to adjust the tension you have to adjust the speed there's a lot of things going and here it's a much more manageable speed to go at your own pace you also can create beautiful yarns like the one I just showed you and then eventually you can upgrade to the spinning wheel but that doesn't always have to be the trajectory some people are solely drop spindlers 
some people start off with the spinning wheel and so for me it did help me get a grasp of spinning using the spinning wheel first and then I had more of a basic understanding of the spindle so you might have to just gauge what's gonna work best for you so next I'm gonna show you a demonstration of how I use my job spindle and include some tips and tricks to hopefully ease you into drop spindling or improve your practice but just keep in mind that it is a slower process to use a job spindle compared to a spinning wheel this took me maybe 30 minutes to an hour and this took me a few weeks so and you can see the yardage is significant in both so your journey is going to be unique to you but i am wishing you luck you got this let's head to the footage of me using my job spindle So once you're ready to move past the spindle or you're ready to invest in your own spinning wheel, one thing that I take much pride in is my hand spun sweater, the one that I'm currently wearing. And this is the year round popover by Melissa Georges. And it just really fits and embraces my hand spun quality. They're thick and thin. I realized that half of the sweater is in three ply, the bottom half is in two ply because I ran out of yarn. So you're gonna have to assess what works, what doesn't work. For this particular sweater I ordered I want to say 8 ounces and then I had to reorder another 8 ounces so about 16 ounces of yarn or fiber to create this project but that's going to highly depend on how thin the yarn is how much yardage you're able to get out of it but this was something I'm so proud of and definitely want another hand spun sweater in my future other things that I have hand spun is this hat. This is the 2x2 hat by Anne Gagnon. 
my favorite and probably my only hat pattern that I'll ever make. But this is my go-to hat pattern and this is the wool that I got from last year's Lambtown Festival and it has held up quite a bit since I created this. I love the color, I love that it's so unique and I can also try it on for you. So this is my cute hat and I did create matching mittens that I was so proud of but sadly I have lost one in the mix so I only have one right now. These are things that can inspire you to create with your hand spun because I started my hand spun journey when I was early in grad school and I would make things and then never use them. I would make things, be critical of it, make things and not be happy with it, kind of just throw it, never see it again. But when I got into spinning again last year, I really wanted to make my investment worth it. So I said, if I'm going to invest in this spinning wheel, I got my spinning wheel at a fiber festival for $250. I said, if I'm gonna invest this money into it, then I'm gonna to have to use what I create, whether I love it or not. And so that has been my challenge and my growth mindset to whether I like it or not, because originally, if you go back to this video, I said I was not happy with this yarn. I was not happy with the feel, the color, and now I'm happy with it. So I think that's one process of spinning is throughout the, the many different steps to make it yarn. You might not be happy with it, you might not love it, but you may end up loving the end product. So I'm really happy with these. The only thing about hand spinning is it takes time. You can't just get yarn off the shelf, out of the storage unit, closet, wherever you hold yarn in. It takes time to create it. It took me months to create this and you spin it, wash it, knit with it. So recently I've been working on a hand spun project. This is actually yarn from not too far from me from Jacob Sheep. Meridian Jacobs actually has this wool in stock if you're interested in purchasing some local fiber from her. But I was able to ply this on itself because it was a singles and I didn't have enough fiber to spin with. So I was able to ply this on itself and my spinning is actually getting a lot more consistent. After I got it off of the wheel, it was spinning a lot it was spinning on itself like that and then after I soaked it with wool wash let it hang dry you can see there's very minimal spinning and I know that that means that it it's not over applied it's not under applied and you can even see if I'm able to get a close-up that there's more consistency to my spin so with practice Practice makes perfect and you will get there with your spinning journey but just know that this wasn't where I originally started on my journey. So part of my goal is to use what I spin and this past week I was able to cast on another 2x2 two two hat by Anne Gagnon. That's my go-to hat pattern because it's so simple. You literally cast on what you need for your size and then 2x2 two two rib till the end. So this is where I got with my hat progress. Originally I had purchased this wool to make a brown sweater but I just don't have enough yardage for that. So I have this much wound up in a cake. I have another ball of this. Maybe I could have made a sweater. I have evidence of M&Ms. And I know I had, it was on the floor, another little hank of this because I only had this much left. So with this, this, this and this. I still don't think it would be enough for a sweater. I think I would probably need double the quantity to make a sweater. So that's what what the issue of this sweater was. I didn't have enough. I think I was like halfway here and I needed to make another order. So I'm loving this brown hat. You probably can't see it that well because of the dark color, but isn't it so cute? So, so cute. This is going to be a hat with a brim but I kind of want it to be a brimless hat, but the pattern is designed to have a brim. So still working on this, but I'm really loving brown this season, especially a dark brown. So this is something that you can practice in your spinning journey, whether it's on a job spindle, whether it's on a spinning wheel. And for me, the reason why I love to spin, it's more of a closer connection to the animal it's less processed it's right 
sheep to fiber sheep to wool you're making the process of the wool from wool to finished garment the yarn is going through my hands three four maybe even five times and it's really having like that energy that spiritual connection even the smell of it really makes you feel closer to the process and it's something that i don't get with acrylics because it's machine made human manufactured and i feel like when i'm getting wool from a farmer from a sheep owner the sheep have names you can see the sheep and you can really have that connection not only with the animal but also the person that's caring for the animals it just has a very more personal and deeper connection so whether i love the end product or not the process for me really really gets me closer to my my project and to the whole process and my love for knitting and crochet so one challenge that i want you to challenge me is i haven't used my hand spun for crochet so maybe that might be something that i try but right now i've only done knitting projects knitted hats knitted oh actually i lied this is crochet i forgot to say so I, i'm lying i'm lying but i would like to do more crochet garments with my hand spun so let me take this off because it's not done yet. I hope that the footage has brought you some more clarity, maybe answered some of your questions when it comes to using a job spindle. But I'll be interested if you know of any patterns that are actually made for hand spun yarn. I know that spin cycle is often used in a lot of projects that kind of give it that hand spun feel, but I know that they first originally started as a hand spun only company and then moved over to manufacturing. So there's actually machines that are trying to replicate that hand spun feel. And it's very lucrative, it's very priced well. They, I'm sure they're making lots of money, but why not try to recreate that ourselves? So some goals that I have is I wanna learn different types of plying. Right now I just do the generic two ply, but I know there's chain plying i know there's fractal plying or fractal type yarn and so there's so much more for me to learn i'm still trying to calculate yardage wraps per inch i kind of got down pat but there's just so much wealth of knowledge in the spinning world and i'm still considered a relatively newbie i think that i passed the newbie level but i'm still trying to grow and absorb and enhance in my skill set so hopefully you get inspired to make your own job spindle buy a spindle i know etsy has a lot of handmade spindles that they sell there and just get some fiber practice it's going to be thick and thin it's going to be one there's gonna take time to have more of a consistent spin but I'm excited to hear in the comments below if spinning is a hobby that you want to take up this cozy fall season well thank you so much for stopping by today's episode I hope that I brought some spinning creativity and excitement your way but I appreciate you stopping by I hope that you and your family are happy healthy and safe and talk to you soon take care bye